911. Where's your emergency? Yes. I woke up this morning and my daughter was not in the house. I don't know if she walked out. I don't know what's going on, but she's not here. How old is she's your not... daughter? She's five. Five? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What time did you wake up? When did you wake up? I saw her. Uh, at 5.30 last night. 5.30 last night. Is that when you put her to bed? Yes, ma'am. No, when she went back to bed. Okay. That was 5 this morning. Is that what you're telling me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, were there any doors open or anything like that? She know how to unlock the front door. Okay. What is her name? Shania Davis. As humans, we all have our fair share of mistakes. It's inevitable, it will happen. Some of us have things that we wish we could go back in time and change, but the truth is that once a mistake is created, you can only either move forward and learn from the mistake, or you can choose to repeat it. But we as society seem to repeat the same mistakes over and over. This next story that I'm bringing to you is coming out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. And I truly believe that if it weren't for this one fatal mistake, then the outcome might have been totally different. This is the story about how mistake after mistake would alter the lives of many. This is the story of Shania Davis, or who others know as Angel. June 14, 2004. The world would make way for Shania Davis. Shania Davis was described as very friendly. Her father says that she was well reserved. She was shy in the beginning, but if she warmed up to you and got to know you, she would eventually get on your nerves just the amount of attention that she would show you. She also, at her age, seemed to have a good understanding of worth ethic. She was a busy bumblebee. Whenever someone was, say, cleaning the house, she had to be right there helping them. She was also a little diva in the making. She enjoyed the girly things, such as playing dress up, fixing hair, playing with Barbie dolls, just anything that a normal child her age would do, that's what she did. She was brought into this world by Bradley Lockhart and Antoinette. Now, by the year of 2009, Shania would be five years old. She would be attending Morganson Road Elementary School. The teachers there loved her. She was eager to learn. The students loved her as well. As I said, she was a real friendly person, so making conversation with a stranger was a little rough at first, but once she got to know him, she was all over them. That's just how she was. Shania would be predominantly raised by her father. Her mother was never really in her life. And in a minute, you're going to find out that it probably should have stayed that way. Now, Shania's life was great. Life at home with her dad was lovely, but her mom, on the other hand, was going through a lot of issues. She had past drug use past problems and at the year of 2009 I guess Bradley felt like she was trying to change for the better she had got him a place to live so Bradley decided that maybe it'd be a good thing if he let Shania be inside of her life so Bradley sent Shania to live with Antoinette so at this point Shania is essentially between her father's house and her mother's house she would go visit her father but her father was remarried he had a wife and she would testify that sometimes it seems that Shania had marks on her. She felt that she was being abused. She said that on a few occasions she saw cigarette burns in her skin. But regardless of those situations, Shania continued to go to her mother's house. The back and forth visits would continue until November 10th of 2009. That's when those visits would come to a screeching halt because Shania would vanish. And at 6.52 in the morning, her mother would place a call to 911, informing them that her daughter was missing and she can't find her. 911, where's your emergency? Yes, ma'am. My name is Antoinette Davis. Hey, let me see. Hey, see me. Hello. Ma'am. My name is Antoinette Davis. Okay, I'm not getting your address clearly. Can you slow down a little bit and tell me again? 1116A. 1116A? 16. 16. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay ma'am. How 
Like, can I help you? I woke up this morning and my daughter was not in the house. I don't know if she walked out. Or I don't know what's going on, but she's not here. How old is your daughter? She's five. Five? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What time did you wake up? When did you last see her? I saw her uh, at 530 last night. 530 last night. Is that when you put her to bed? Yes, ma'am. No, when she went back to bed. Okay. That was five this morning. Is that what you're telling me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, were there any doors open or anything like that? She know how to unlock the front door. Okay. What is her name? Shania Davis. Spell that name for me. S-H-A-N-I-Y-A. And she white, black, or Hispanic? She's mixed. Okay. She's biracial. What was she wearing? She's wearing just a blue, big old blue, a blue shirt with designs on the front, but her hair is out. Okay. Does she have on um, any she pants? Didn't have, she didn't take no shoes, no pants, no nothing. Does she have on underwear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What, do you know what color? They're white and got pink. I guess I, I can't. I can't really remember. They're like white with pink designs on them. Okay. Okay. And you said none of the doors were open. No, ma'am. There were locked, but she knows how to unlock the front door. Was it closed this yes, morning? Yes, ma'am. And you said it was around five thirty. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Perfect. Have you checked the neighborhood? I checked everywhere. I haven't checked the back end of the neighborhood yet, but I checked the front end. I'm just. I don't. I don't know what else to do. I'm so, I'm, I don't know what else to do. Are there any more uh, juveniles inside the home? It's my son, but he's here. Okay. And your door was not unlocked, that's what you're telling me? No, it was not unlocked, but okay. I'm telling you she knows how to unlock it. I'm hoping that she didn't unlock it and walk out. Okay. Joining us exclusively from Fayetteville is Shania's father, Bradley Lockhart, and his sister, Carrie Lockhart Davis. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Bradley, let me begin with you. What are police telling you this morning about the latest in the search for your daughter? Um, they're keeping me informed, however, they're not providing a lot of information. I do understand it's in the best interest of the case in finding my daughter and bringing her home safely. Are you feeling hopeful this morning? I've been feeling hopeful every day uh, that someone out there would uh, do the right thing and take my daughter somewhere to a hospital, police station, just anywhere safe, drop her off at Walmart, anywhere, I don't care. Um, just so somebody can find her and bring her back to the people that love her. So Shania is missing. Her mother has no idea where she's at. So the police would issue an Amber Alert and they would immediately begin the search for Shania. Now, at this point, all they know is that she's missing and they have nothing to go on. But that Amber Alert would bring some good news. They would get a call from someone who worked at a hotel, a female employee, who says that she believes she saw Shania there the day before. She says that a younger gentleman came in with the female around the age of the person who was missing in the Amber Alert. She says that this guy rented a hotel room, said that he was on the way to drop her off with her mother, so he just needed to rest because he was driving a long way. Well, not only was that Shania, but they were able to capture surveillance camera of him carrying Shania through the hallway. So with this newfound information, the authorities would work quickly to find out who this guy is. But it doesn't take long because when you stay at hotels, you have to present an ID. So essentially, we'll figure out who this is very quickly. So they find out that this guy's name is Mario McNeil. Now, Mario is no stranger to the family. Mario used to date Antoinette's sister. So now they're just trying to figure out what is he doing with her. Now, Mario would be tracked down by the police. They find him. They interrogate him. Mario McNeil says he's innocent. He says that he took her to that hotel. However, he did drop her off and he doesn't know where she's at presently. So Mario is basically saying that he's innocent, he doesn't know where she's at, so all the police can do is now go back to Antoinette Davis and try to get her side of the story. Now, seeing that he did used to date her sister, 
it makes it very funny circumstances that the mother called her in missing but yet she's with someone that the family knows so they start to interrogate davis and it doesn't take long for davis to break now this begins because davis although she did have a job did have a stable household now she was still using and she had even racked up a lot of debt taking drugs on consignment and who did she owe this money none other than mario mcneil now mario mcneil didn't initially come over there to just try and get his money you see he had been smoking doing the little drugs that night and he was just going through his phone hitting up females trying to see if anyone was available to hang out he had even tried to contact Antoinette's sister just trying to come over maybe chill a little bit well she's not picking up the phone so what he does is he decides to go over there and when he goes over there he sees Antoinette. He then tells Antoinette that he wants to see her sister Brenda. He wants to hang out with her. But Antoinette tells him that no, her sister is asleep. He can't see her. So what does he do then? He decides, well, since I can't see her, how about that money you owe me? You can run that to me right now. But she doesn't have the money. He gets upset. Now he's angry that he can't see the sister. He's belligerent. He's high and now the only thing on his mind is his money so since she can't pay him he says either you give me the money or you can spread your legs and we'll call it even well Antoinette decides to take the negative option only she doesn't fulfill this obligation herself she decides to hand Mario her five-year-old daughter and agrees to let Mario take her daughter to a hotel so now that she's admitted this she goes to jail so now her and mario are both in jail with his newfound information mario is interrogated again he maintains that he's innocent he has nothing to do with anything he once again says that yes i was with her but i dropped her off wherever she's at now i don't know now since the first interview, Mario has now tried to electrocute himself twice while he was in jail. Yes, tried to take himself out. So those are telling signs that something might not be right here. Something sinister might be lurking beneath these stories. So Shania is still missing. Her mother's in jail. Her father is going out of his mind. He can't find his daughter, but you're about to find out that this isn't the first time that Bradley has went through something like this. 11 years prior to Shania disappearing, his ex-wife would be murdered. Her name was Vicki Sue Lockhart. And on March 3rd of 1998, she would be back home visiting with her family. That is when intruders would enter the home. Inside this home were five adults. All five adults would be bound and gagged. And then once the robbery was completed, they would all be shot multiple times. Vicki Sue Lockhart and her sister Chanel Coleman, as well as another man named David Lee Epps, would all perish in this tragedy. So now you understand that Bradley Lockhart has been through this before. In fact, six years after losing his wife is when Shania would enter this world and she would make life just a little bit easier. She would make the healing process just a little bit faster. And now his little beacon of light is missing. I miss her and love her very much. Contact the police department. Anybody who has any information Whoever has children out there knows how much their child means to them. Allow them to bring her home safely to us. Shania, if you're listening to Daddy, I miss you so much, honey, and I'm waiting for you. I'm not going to give up, and you don't give up either, honey. At this point, we now have Antoinette in jail and she's giving the authorities the real story. So they approach Mario and let him know, you know, basically it's up. She told us everything, so where is she? So this is when Mario decides to tell the police what really happened. Only he doesn't really ever admit to anything. The only thing he ever admits to is where he left the body. He would disclose where he think he left her, although he does say he didn't know the exact location, so 
His lawyers get in contact with the authorities, let them know this information, you know, but this is all just a charade, you know. It's to pretend like you're showing transparency, you know, like you're remorseful, like you really care. It's just the lawyer's way of trying to save you because at this point, the only thing he can do is try and save you from the death penalty. So they searched the area that he provided for them and they did in fact find Shania. Good evening, everyone. Eyewitness News broke this story just after 1 o'clock, and new details continue to come in at this hour. Chopper 11 HD remains live over the scene off Walker Road and Highway 87 on the Lee Harnett County line. Authorities do remain on the scene tonight. We begin our coverage in the Breaking News Center live with details. Steve? Francis and Tisha's search teams made up of volunteers and law enforcement officers spent a second day searching near the Lee Harnett County line, and by about 1 o'clock this afternoon, they found the body of Shania Davis. Chopper 11 HD is flying over the scene. It's about a quarter mile from Highway 87 southeast of Sanford. Fayetteville police are in charge of the investigation and right now they're waiting for the SBI to arrive to help exhume the body. You can see they have lights out there and they could be working there well into the night. The motive behind the murder of Shania Davis is unknown, though we can speculate that he did violate her and it was probably to keep her quiet. I'm pretty sure she put up quite a big fight. The coroner would conclude in the autopsy that she was violated and she was smothered. So how it happened, he's never told how. I don't know if he ever will, but you know, that's a real heinous act. It's sickening, it's sad. Uh, it makes you question humanity as a whole, you know, where are we going these days which brings me right back to the beginning of this video when i was talking about empathy what a powerful thing empathy is the ability to empathize with others to truly feel how others are feeling that is something that we as humans all possess just some choose to suppress it and Sometimes the lack of empathy causes us to do things that may cause a fatal mistake. Now, I say this to say this. I'm in no way, shape or form trying to blame the authorities for her death. However, a couple of weeks before Shania went missing, Antoinette's house was raided by the authorities. You know, this was a drug raid. But during this raid, they didn't follow protocol. They were to notify child protection services that they did in fact raid that house for drugs and there were children present but the authorities did not do this if it weren't for this one mistake shania might still be here because proper procedure would have been for them to open a case on the family they would have seen you know the habitat that she was living in with her mother and they would have immediately sent Shania to live back with her father in a safe and clean environment but due to this one mistake by the authorities by not reporting what the facts were she ended up losing her life and I felt like that this was easily preventable yes that monster Mario deserves every bit of and every negative comment that comes his way. He is the reason why this happened, as well as Antoinette. But I can't stop thinking about how if they'd have just followed protocol and, uh, you know, reported that it wasn't a safe environment for her, she would have been taken out immediately and she would probably still be here today. For Antoinette's role in this, she would receive a whopping 17 years at a minimum and is currently due to be released out of prison in May of 2027. I feel like she's just as liable. I feel like she should be in there for the rest of her life, but you know, that's the choice that the jury made and the judge overall decided that that was the appropriate reaction. So can't do anything but move on from that. Now, as far as Mario, Due to the nature of the crime, the prosecutors would, in fact, choose to seek the death penalty. So Mario McNeil would have his day in court where he would stand in front of the judge, in front of the family, in front of the entire world, right, the and his fate Ross. would be decided. Will the four-person please stand? Madam Clerk, please uh, take the verdict. Madam Four Person, the jury has returned as its verdict as to the issues and recommendation as to punishment as to the defendant, Mario McNeil, and file number 09 CRS 
0.040. As to issue number one, yes. As to issue number two, yes. As to issue number three, yes. As to issue number four, yes. The jury has returned as its recommendation as to the defendant, Mario McNeil, that he be sentenced to death. It's this unanimous recommendation of the jury. So say you all by raising your hand. The court sees 12 hands. Thank you, have a seat. Defense may have a seat. Mario McNeil would attempt to have his death sentence overthrown. However, the Supreme Court denied to move forward with this motion and his death sentence was upheld. And one day, those officers are gonna walk down that hallway. They're gonna open his cell. They're gonna place him in cuffs. And then they're gonna lead him to a little room, about the same size room as a normal hotel room, like the one he took Shania to. Then he'll be placed on a bed. He'll be strapped down, unable to move, unable to fight back, like Shania was when he guiltlessly took her life. And then they're gonna take that syringe and place it inside of you. You're gonna jerk, you're gonna shake, you're gonna fight back with everything that you have, just as I'm sure that Shania did before she left this earth. But just like she couldn't make it through, you won't make it through either. And the last thing that you will remember when you close your eyes will be that beautiful little angel's face. I can guarantee that. Rest in peace, Shania Davis. Thank you for being a light for others.